Hey friends, Joe here at the Reverb Studio where we record all kinds of live band sessions and lessons and other stuff. But today we're gonna to do something simpler and show you the easiest way to record an electric guitar. So before we dive into recording or miking techniques, let's talk about the key components that you'll need. First of all, an audio interface. Today we'll be using a Focusrite 2i2 and a computer with some recording software. We'll be using GarageBand. Okay, a little bit about the audio interface. Quite simply, it takes your uh, guitar signal, any analog signal, and uh, transfers it to a digital signal that your computer can read. The Focusrite 2i2 has two inputs and two outputs, so you can record up to two instruments or signals into this at the same time, and you can plug into two speakers out of it. There are many different options for audio interface. This is a nice, affordable, a great durable option. And when I first started home recording, this is what I went to uh, and it worked out great. And same with recording software, many options, Pro Tools, Logic. And today we're using GarageBand, which comes free on any Mac computer. Now that you have your audio interface and your computer, let's talk about maybe the most common way to record your guitar, which is with an amp and one microphone. So, got your guitar, signal is going from the guitar, quarter inch cable into the amp, mic'd up with a microphone, XLR cable into the interface, and then out of the interface into the computer. Always a good idea before you start recording to check your levels, uh, make sure your input gain is cool. So, um, all meters are green, yellow, and red. If you're in the green, you're good to go. Uh, if you're in the yellow, you're still in a safe spot, but you're on the verge of clipping. And if you're getting into the red, then you're clipping, and so you should uh, adjust your input gain, which is typically on the front of your audio interface right here. Many different options for microphones, they typically fall into three categories, dynamic, condenser, and ribbon. And we'll be showing you a taste of all three today. We're gonna to start out with a dynamic microphone. This is a Shure SM57, which is without a doubt the most commonly used guitar amplifier microphone. Okay, the next style of microphone we'll be using is a condenser, uh, which is typically more sparkly and a little bit more sensitive. We've got here a Lewitt LCT240 microphone. Let's hear it. Another thing about condenser microphones, they require phantom power, a little bit more juice to get those mics going. Uh, th so there's usually a 48 volt button or switch on the front of your interface right here. Quick little thing about phantom power, make sure you turn off your phantom power before unplugging your condenser microphone. Phantom power is a little elusive. All right, and our third style of microphone that we're gonna use today is a ribbon mic, which is gonna sound uh, a little darker, maybe a little older, some more character. Today we're gonna be using a Biodynamic M160, kind of a more expensive microphone, but a uh, popular guitar amp microphone. <laughs> So what you just heard was all three microphones pointed directly at the center of the speaker cone. An easy way to vary the mic placement is to simply move it back away from the speaker a little bit. This is like maybe six inches from the center of the cone. Another way that you can place your microphone, a term that you'll often hear, is off-axis, which basically means that you're taking the microphone and turning it diagonally about two inches away from the center of the cone. It gives a less direct feel, maybe more of a roomy feel. It 
important to note here that these are just some starting points or some ideas for mic placements. At the end of the day, placing a mic wherever you want, and if it sounds good to you, then that's exactly what you should do, is maybe the most important takeaway here. Let's just try something wild here. I got the mic here. I'm just going to point it directly away from the speaker, which you wouldn't normally think you would do. But hey, let's try it and see what happens with some delay. <laughs> While micing a guitar amp is maybe the most common way to record a guitar, going straight into an interface is perhaps even a more simple way. Just take that quarter inch that was going into your amp and go straight into the interface. When we plug our guitar directly into the interface, we then look to amp modeling software. Just like we have choices with audio interfaces and microphones, many choices for amp modeling software as well. Today we'll be using Native Instruments Guitar Rig, which is a pretty incredible very expansive amp modeling plugin. Native Instruments Guitar Rig has presets ranging all the way from simple jazz amps to crazy effects for solos and all kinds of stuff. Always good to experiment with pedals that you may already have while still going direct in. Just check those levels and make sure that you're not clipping. So today we talked about some simple guitar recording techniques using one microphone or direct into an audio interface. We'll get to some advanced techniques and other options in future videos. But again, always remember, you do you. Put the microphone wherever you want it. If you think it sounds cool, then it does. Let this be a guide to maybe get you going on recording an electric guitar. We'll see you guys next time.